although Bubble provides a slider menu, it's not a menu that's very functional in terms of you can't customize it the way you'd probably like to do so. Let me show you how to create a custom slider menu, and this is particularly useful for something like a mobile page where uh, you need extra space. Let's jump in. Before we get started, let me just draw your attention to the guide we've just released called Mastering Design in Bubble. You'll be able to create really beautiful designs, much like this one I'm showing you now, built natively in Bubble, and that illustrates correct page structure throughout. Okay, onto the tutorial. So I've created a page. The page is 960 width by 1000 height. 960 is the page size that we work with. I'm going to grab a floating group, drop it on the page, and I'm going to change the color just to a light gray so we can see it. The floating group, which is acting as my menu, will be fixed width. It will be 240 in width. I'm going to drag it to the top left corner. So we have 0x, 0y. And then I need to make it the exact height of the page, which is 1000. But don't make it the exact height. Then when you preview the page, you'll find that the bottom pulls up slightly um, and it won't look very professional. So it needs to be the exact height of the page. The other option I'm going to set is vertically float relative to both. Okay, top and bottom. So it's always full width, full height. And I'm going to float horizontally to the left. Obviously, if this was a right-hand menu, it would be on the right. Now I'm going to nab this logo, drop it here instead and just delete this header for the time being because we don't need it. Okay, so this would act as our menu bar. Why don't we create some options? So I'm going to grab a group. And I'm going to use the guides I set up on the page. I have grids and borders set up with a 20 step guide. I'm going to call this group menu item. Okay. I'm not concerned about any responsive settings with these groups because we're working with a fixed width floating group. I'm going to drop some text in here. Let's pretend that this is the home button. I'm just going to style it quickly. So 24, this makes it 36 in height. There you go. That's too large. Let's make this 20 and 30. Yeah, that's perfect. Start with the X value at 40. Okay, so that would be a button. I'll just copy and paste. This would be a button as well. Maybe this says sales. And this would be a button as well. Perhaps members. Okay, I'm not going to style these buttons. This is more about the action of a custom slider menu but you can style this how you like. You can create collapsible repeating groups beneath it. You can change the look and feel, and you can really achieve anything you'd like to with this custom slider menu. Now you're probably most interested in the action to make this a slider menu. So let's have a look at that. So I'm going to just grab a group and just make this 720. It fills up the rest of the space. Drag it down to 1000. Okay. And now I'm going to grab the menu icon. I'm using material icon. I much prefer material icon to the default bubble one. 
using my guide, which is 20 pixels. Top right hand corner, searching for menu. Okay, fantastic. That's going to be fixed width as well. At this stage, I'm just going to have a very quick look at responsive. And I can see that responsive is working really well. 320 is the full, smallest phone size, so that's what it would look like at 320. Now I'm going to create a conditional on this icon that states when the floating group that we've just created as our custom slider menu, when that floating group is visible, let's change the icon to a close button. Because by default, given that it's a slider menu, it won't be visible on page load. We need to activate it by pressing the button. So let's go back to this floating slider menu, uncheck the box that says this is visible on page load. Now for the action. What we do is we go to element actions, animate, and just type in FL floating group. For the animation, type the word no, N0, because it's these no bounce actions that give us a real nice smooth animation action. So we're looking for transition no bounce left in. Okay, we do need to create a conditional on this button that says only run this conditional if the floating group isn't visible. Okay, so if it's not visible, animate and open the floating group custom slider menu. Now let's copy and paste this action because we're running it off the same button. And now we do the opposite. We say when the floating group is visible, then we change the action to no bounce left out. Okay, and you can control the durations here. Have a play with that, decide what you prefer. Okay, so we have our menu icon. Let's click it, open, close. Look how nice that looks. Okay, I won't go any further in styling that custom slider menu because it was really the actions that we were trying to illustrate here. So go ahead and create your own and see how creative you can get with that slider menu. Maybe you can have a focus on the slider menu, which is like a colored bar uh, to the right inside the group that says home, sales, or members. Other things you can do is you can create collapsible submenus. So when you click on the menu home or sales, then it expands to show uh, submenu items. And I do cover this in another video. Good luck.